Hello students, welcome to the lecture on accounting, concepts, principles and standards. After this lecture, you will be able to learn the following objectives. The financial statements are used by a number of users, both within and outside an organization, such as owners, investors and government. As the types of users are diverse, it becomes necessary to formulate the accounting concepts and principles to maintain uniformity in the financial statement. The regulatory authorities who are responsible for setting rules and standards of accounting issue accounting standards to standardize the accounting practices adopted to produce financial statements. Some of the major accounting regulatory bodies are the International Accounting Standard Board IASB, the Financial Accounting Standards Board FASB and the Institute of Chartered Accountant of India ICAI. In India, the Companies Act 1956 has made it mandatory for the management and the auditors to state in their reports whether the accounting standards have been adhered to in preparing the financial statements. Some of the important accounting concepts are business entity concept, dual aspect concept, cost concept, accrual concept and conservation concept. Concept of accounting Accounting concepts are the general rules or assumptions made while preparing the financial statements. These concepts help the internal and external users to understand and interpret the accounting information similarly. Business Entity Concept According to the business entity concept, business is treated as a separate unit or entity which is distinct from its owners, creditors, managers and other stakeholders. It implies that business and its owners are two independent entities. Even the owner is treated as a creditor of the business. Dual Aspect Concept The dual aspect concept is a basic principle of accounting which is considered as the foundation of accounting. According to this concept, every transaction has a twofold effect, namely receiving and giving. These are the two aspects of every business transaction. Apart from this, the dual aspect concept is called the double entry system of bookkeeping which implies that the total assets and total liabilities of an organization should be equal. Going concern concept Going concern concept is based upon the assumption that an organization would not be seized or liquidated in the immediate future and continues to operate for an indefinite period. According to Kohler's Dictionary for Accountants, the going concern concept is defined as any enterprise which is expected to continue operating indefinitely in the future. Accounting period concept. Accounting period refers to the period for which an organization evaluates its financial position. It covers the profit earned or loss incurred by the organization for a particular duration that is represented in the income statement. According to accounting period concept, the entire business tenure should be divided into equal segments to study and analyze the results properly. Money measurement concept the money measurement concept underlines the fact that only those transactions and events would be recorded in the books of accounting that are financial in nature. For example, although goodwill, loyalty and honesty of employees affect the profits of an organization, these are not recorded in the accounting books as they cannot be expressed in terms of money. Cost concept According to the cost concept, the assets are measured as per the price paid, cost incurred to acquire them. This cost would include the cost of acquisition, transportation and installation. The cost concept is historical in nature 
as the prices recorded for the asset are the past prices, the prices paid at the time of acquisition. One of the important aspects of the cost concept is that if the organization does not pay anything for acquiring the asset, it is not recorded in the book of accounts. Periodic matching of cost and revenue concept. It is widely accepted that the desire for making profit is the most important trigger to keep the owner engaged in the business activities. The profit earned by an organization can be calculated by matching the revenues received with the cost incurred during a specific duration. The net income of a period can be determined by deducting total expenses from total revenues. On the basis of this concept, adjustments are made in the final accounts for all the prepaid expenses, outstanding expenses, accrued incomes and unearned incomes. Verifiable Objective Evidence Concept According to the Verifiable Objective Evidence Concept, all accounting transactions must have documentary evidences. The recording of business transactions should be done in an objective manner and should be free from biases. For example, for the purchase of machinery, the receipt for the amount paid is the documentary evidence for the cost of the machine and this would provide the objectivity basis for recording the transaction. Realization concept According to the realization concept, an organization should determine the time when the revenues are earned or expenses are incurred. The revenue from a business transaction should be recorded in the accounting books only when it is realized. Accrual concept According to the accrual concept, revenues or expenses are recorded when they are earned or incurred and not when cash is paid or received by an organization. In such a case, profits can be calculated by matching expenses with the revenue when they are earned or incurred instead of the cash received or paid for them. Disclosure concept According to the disclosure concept, accounts must be prepared honestly and all the facts associated must be fully disclosed. Financial statements are the only means to communicate the financial information of the business to different users. Therefore, it is important that the financial statements must make full and adequate disclosures which would be helpful in the decision making. Materiality concept the American Accounting Association defines the term materiality as an item should be regarded as material if there is reason to believe that knowledge of it would influence the decision of the informed investor. According to the principle of materiality, unimportant items are either left out or merged with other items. Consistency concept According to the consistency concept, accounting practices and methods remain unchanged from one accounting period to another. The financial information of the business entity can be comparable with the accounting periods and with other entities if they adhere to the concept of consistency. However, the idea of consistency also facilitates the introduction of improvement in the techniques of accounting. Conservatism concept Kohler defines it as a guideline which chooses between acceptable accounting alternatives for recording events or transactions so that the least favorable immediate effect on assets, income and owner's equity is reported. This concept is based on the conservative approach which allows the determination of future income in such a manner that the profits are not overstated and losses are not understated. Defining Accounting Principles Accounting principles can be defined as the norms that are universally adopted by accountants while recording the accounting transactions. These are general rules or standards 
followed to guide the recording and reporting of the financial transactions. They are derived from the accounting concepts and help in developing the accounting techniques. Accounting principles have proved to be meaningful and useful for the users of accounting information. This is because accounting records and financial statements are prepared in the standard form which can be easily understood by all the users. Fundamental Accounting Principles To better understand financial statements, it is helpful to look at some fundamental accounting principles embodied in the GAAP. These principles determine the manner of recording, measuring, and reporting company transactions. As you will see, the practical application of these principles requires professional judgment which can result in considerable differences in financial statements. The Assumption of Arm's Length Transactions Accounting is based on the recording of economic transactions that can be quantified in dollar amounts. It assumes that the parties to a transaction are economically rational and are free to act independently of each other. To illustrate, let's assume that you are preparing a personal balance sheet for a bank loan on which you must list all your assets. You are including your BMW 325 as an asset. You bought the car a few months ago from your father for $3,000 when the retail price of the car was $15,000. You got a good deal. However, the price you paid, which would be the number recorded on your balance sheet, was not the market price. Since you did not purchase the BMW in an arm's length transaction, your balance sheet would not reflect the true value of the asset. The cost principle. Book value. The book value is the net value of an asset or liability recorded on the financial statements, normally reflects historical cost. Generally, the value of an asset that is recorded on a company's books reflects its historical cost. The historical cost is assumed to represent the fair market value of the item at the time it was acquired and is recorded as the book value. Over time, it is unlikely that an asset's book value will be equal to its market value because market value tends to change over time. The major exception to this principle is marketable securities such as stock of another company which is recorded at their current market value. It is important to note that accounting statements are records of past performance. They are based on historical costs, not on current market prices or values. Accounting statements translate the business's past performance into dollars and cents, which helps management and investors better understand how the business has performed in the past. The Realization Principle Under the Realization Principle, Revenue is recognized only when the sale is virtually completed and the exchange value for the goods or services can be reliably determined. As a practical matter, this means that most revenues are recognized at the time of sale whether or not cash is actually received. At this time, if a firm sells to its customers on credit and account receivables is recorded, the firm receives the cash only when the customer actually makes the payment. Although the realization principle concept seems straightforward, there can be considerable ambiguity in its interpretation. For example, should revenues be recognized when goods are ordered, when they are shipped, or when payment is received from the customer? The matching principle. Accounting tries to match revenue on the income statement with the expenses used to generate the revenue. In practice, this principle means that revenue is first recognized according to the realization principle and then matched with the cost associated with producing the revenue. For example, if we manufacture a product and sell it on credit or accounts receivables, the revenue is recognized at the time of sale. The expenses associated with manufacturing the product, expenditures for raw material, labors, equipment, and facilities will be recognized at the same time. Notice that the actual cash outflows for expenses may not occur at the same time the expenses are recognized. It should be clear that the figures on the income statement more than likely will not correspond to the actual cash inflows and outflows during the period. And last, you have 
the going concern assumption. The going concern assumption is the assumption that a business will remain in operation for the foreseeable future. This assumption underlies much of what is done in accounting. For example, suppose that Kmart had $4.6 billion of inventory on its balance sheet. Representing what the firm actually paid for the inventory in arm's length transactions. If we assume that Kmart is a going concern, the balance sheet figure is a reasonable number because, in the normal course of business, we expect Kmart to be able to sell the goods for its costs plus some reasonable markup. However, suppose Kmart declares bankruptcy and is forced by its creditors to liquidate its assets. If this happens, Kmart is no longer a going concern. What will the inventory be worth then? We cannot be certain, but 50 cents on the dollar might be a high figure. The going concern assumption allows the accountant to record assets at cost rather than their value in a liquidation sale, which is usually much less. You can see that the fundamental accounting principles just discussed leave considerable professional discretion to accountants in the preparation of financial statements. As a result, Financial statements can do differ because of honest differences in professional judgments. Of course, there are limits on honest professional differences, and at some point, an accountant's choices can cross the line and result in cooking the books. Features of Accounting Principles Accounting principles have evolved over a period on the basis of practical experiences. These principles are in the dynamic form. This implies that they are regularly influenced by the changes in the economic, legal and social environment. In addition, any change in the need of business would also affect the accounting principles. A brief description of the features of accounting principles. Flexible implies that the accounting principles are not rigid. They can change as per the requirement of business. Whenever a problem arises in accounting that requires a solution, accountants arrive at a reasonable decision. It must be remembered that accounting principles are not permanent and can change with time. Generally accepted refers to the rigidity of accounting principles. It implies that a standard framework should be used for recording, summarizing and reporting the financial transactions. Generally Accepted Accounting Principles GAAP. Certain principles or rules of conduct have been developed to provide consistency and uniformity in the accounting records. The GAAP is a generally accepted codification of preparing and presenting the business incomes, expenses, assets and liabilities of the organization through various financial statements. However, the rules and procedures of GAAP are complex. They have been developed over a long duration on the basis of different aspects such as past experiences, usages or customs, statements by individuals and professional bodies and regulations by government agencies.
The characteristics of GAAP are discussed as follows. Simple guidelines implies that the accounting principles are simple and man-made guidelines derived from past experiences. Ensure uniformity implies that the accounting principles are set for ensuring uniformity and meaningful presentation of the accounting information which can be understood by the users. Relevance depicts that the accounting principles are relevant to the extent that the accounting information presented after following these principles is meaningful and useful. Objectivity implies that the accounting principles are not influenced by the personal bias or judgment of those who have formulated them. This ensures the reliability of the presented accounting information. Feasibility refers to the extent to which the accounting principles can be implemented without complexity and incurring any cost. Accounting standards Accounting standards can be defined as the written statements issued regularly by accounting institutions. These standards are used to hard code the accounting principles that have been generally accepted widely. The ICAI established an Accounting Standards Board ASB, in April 1977 for developing accounting standards. Professionals in many countries have shown great interest in preparing as well as implementing the accounting standards. Significance of Accounting Standards Accounting standards aim at improving the quality of financial statements and removing the alternative methods and diversified policies of accounting. They aim at standardizing the accounting practices and bring in credibility, transparency, uniformity and comparability in the preparation and presentation of financial statements. The accounting standards serve the following purposes. Provide a framework to produce reliable and standardized financial statements. Promote the proper and timely dissemination of the financial information to the management, investors and other interested users and create a sense of confidence among them. Ensure transparency, consistency and comparability of accounting information by providing uniformity in accounting practices as the accountants and auditors follow same rules and procedures. Take into consideration the business environment and laws of a country, applicable to all types of businesses irrespective of their industry and size. Provide flexibility by facilitating an organization to freely adopt any of the practices with a suitable disclosure if the alternative accounting practices are accepted. Functions of Accounting Standards the accounting standards have been created to restrict the adoption of flexibility in the accounting practices and policies by an organization. The standards help the organization and its management to provide reliable accounting information by preparing standardized financial statements. The functions of accounting standards are as follows. Improving credibility and reliability of financial statements implies that accounting standards inculcate confidence among the users by providing a framework that facilitates a credible presentation of the financial statements. Determining managerial accountability implies that the accounting standards determine the regulations and corporate accountability which helps to assess the managerial skills in maintaining and improving the profitability, liquidity and solvency. Helping accountants and auditors refers to the guidance that the accounting professionals get through these accounting standards which help them to prepare and audit the financial statements appropriately. Process of setting accounting standards. The procedure for formulation of accounting standards ensures the participation of all the interested professionals in the formulation and implementation of accounting standards. 
The procedure adopted by the ASB for setting accounting standards is as follows. Determining the board for issuing accounting standards and listing them according to priority. Seeking assistance of various study groups to formulate standards. These groups prepare the preliminary drafts of accounting standards according to the topics assigned to them. The draft of accounting standard so prepared is considered by the ASP which would further send it to different associations and bodies. These business associations and bodies include Federation of Indian Chambers of Commerce and Industry FICCI, Company Law Board CLB, Institute of Cost and Works Accountants of India ICWAI. The representatives of these bodies are also invited at a meeting of the ASP for discussion. Issuing the draft of the standards as an exposure draft for inviting comments by the members of institutes and public at large after considering the views of associations. The exposure draft includes the following basic points. Comprises a statement of concepts and fundamental accounting principles related to the standards. Include the definition of the terms used in the standards. Involves the manner in which the accounting principles have been applied for formulating the standards. Include the presentation and disclosure requirements in complying the standards. Consist of the class of organization to which the standards would apply. Include the date from which the standards would be effective. The council of the institute would consider the final draft of the standards. The modification of draft, if required, is done in consultation with the ASP. After that, the council issues the standards in their final form under its authority. Now in the end, let us summarize what we have learnt in this lecture. Summary.